Let's do a review of the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. This is the uh, Bobtail model or the uh, PC1911 commander size. This is a 45 caliber single action pistol. Uh, it has 8 round capacity in the magazine with one in the chamber. Overall length of this is 7.95 inches and the nice thing about this the weight is 29.6 ounces I was looking for a concealed carry uh, in 45 caliber and I, I wanted to go Smith & Wesson because I shoot the M&P in competition I've got the M&P 9C and I looked at the M&P 45C and it was just a little bit wider than what I wanted to carry uh, inside the waistband uh, this certainly fits the weight category and the width of the pistol is a standard 1911 width which is very nice. Uh, as I said this is a performance center. This has uh, custom wood G10 grips. The frame is a scandium alloy and the slide material is a stainless steel. It's a two-tone finish. Now one of the nice things that caught my eye about this was the slide lightning. Uh, and that is lightning to lessen the weight, not as in lightning bolt. Uh, one of the concerns that I had since I shoot uh, USPSA and IDPA is would this be legal? Now the good news is, according to the uh, IDPA February 17th, 2014, one of the rulings that was made was specifically in reference to the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. Uh, pistols um, uh, under rule 8.2.3.3.2 removal of material from the exterior of the slide other than front cocking serrations tri top engraving carrying melts and high power cuts the question specifically relating to this pistol is uh, is this slide machining allowed in IDPA and the answer that IDPA made was yes uh, with respect to the slide machining for stock service pistol, ESP, CDP, original equipment manufacturer of the OEM firearms with extensive slide machining are approved for use in the IDPA if they meet all the other requirements. And those requirements are uh, that it's a production pistol, it has over 2,000 units of that particular specification, and this one does meet that. So the good news is, yes, this is legal in IDPA. So that was a nice touch. Uh, let's just do a quick review. Hopefully I'll have enough time to uh, also do a cleaning on this one. We'll see how that goes. This, this is the uh, box that it comes in from the Performance Center. And, you know, it's got the standard, standard stuff that goes with it. Let me back that out a little bit. It's got the standard stuff that comes with it. The lock, the first round fired the owner's manual and paperwork underneath there um, and it had uh, an extra magazine uh, with it so nothing different than what we normally see and with this one it comes with a standard 1911 single stack magazine uh, this one has two and with the Smith & Wesson magazine in you can see that the butt plate sticks out just a little bit so what I did since I've got quite a few 1911 magazines I've got a low profile this one is um, I believe it's a Kim Pro Tech yeah this is a Kim Pro Tech 8 round magazine and I like I just like the way it sits more flush and for the uh, inside the waistband holster, I got the CompTAC Infidel holster. Uh, one of the things I like about this is with this particular holster, uh, the butt of the gun isn't covered and fully accessible. And let's see, this through Comtac is $88 plus shipping, so a little pricey for a holster. But with the Comtac, or the Infidel model, I, I really, I really like the uh, belt clip style. This is for a one and three quarter inch belt, which I usually use uh, 
when I shoot competition weekends rather than my normal belt. Uh, the other nice thing about it is uh, I've got a Phobos paddle outside the waistband paddle belt uh, holster and this one is for my Springfield 45 and this one certainly fits right in there also it's got good lock retention and each each one are held in there very nice so the Phobos the 45 caliber and then the CompTAC Infidel holster both of them are fine Okay, let's uh, let's see if we can do just a quick takedown, possibly a, a cleaning. Although I may have cleaned it pretty well after the last time that I shot it. Well, maybe not. Let's do a quick breakdown. Now, because this one uh, is so tight, the tolerances are so tight. Uh, Smith and Wesson sends along the uh, bushing breakdown tool, I guess you call it. So I've been using that until this gets broken in, loosened up a little bit. And this breaks down just like any other 1911. Notice on this, uh, this is called a Briley bushing that's on the inside there. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way. There's a brass Briley bushing inside there uh, that really tightens up the retention on the barrel and uh, improves accuracy a great deal. Okay, so as just like I said, we'll just do a Quick cleaning it shouldn't be too terribly dirty I probably only got about 50 or 60 rounds through it since I cleaned it last I took this out to the range um, the day I got it actually when I when I went and picked it up I had my cleaning kit with me so um, I took about 15 minutes at the range went inside the clubhouse and took it all apart cleaned it down. It was a little dirty, certainly, you know, from all the, the machine work that was done to it. Um, oiled it up real good, took it out to the range, and uh, fired two magazines through it just to make sure that it would go bang. And then uh, I put a target up at 25 yards. And I did freehand shots just to see what kind of accuracy I'd get on rounds 51 through 60 and I know that that's not really a fair comparison uh, Because a gun with this tight tolerance really hasn't been broken in yet. I just wanted to see uh, For the price that I paid for it. I would expect it to shoot very well and uh, Unfortunately not all guns perform that well when you first get them. Uh, I've got a Kimber that was very finicky um, through the first couple hundred rounds and uh, I, I just I just wanted to see how Smith & Wesson did on this particular one so like I said um, we'll take a look at the uh, targets that I shot in just a minute well that's not too bad I've seen worse there's a little dust in there And to clean, oh yeah, yeah, that's kind of nasty. Uh, to clean out the bore, I use a bore snake as I run over here to the shop and get it. Um, really like the bore snake. I, I was raised on the brass brush, um, but with the bore snake, it's kind of an all in one thing. You know, you drop the string through with the weight on it, and the first section has brass brushes in there that you pull through and the second section wipes it clean and the final section is a little bit bigger diameter than the green section but let's let's see if we can see a difference okay that's the before and 
and with this you follow the direction of the bullet you got with the grain I guess you'd say I don't know why that that's so important but Now you'll notice I didn't put any chemical in here either. Um, let's just see. Let's just see if that did any good. Not bad. That was three pulls, no buildup. It's probably got a total of 300 rounds through it by now. I've had it for probably two weeks. But one of the things that I noticed, hopefully the glare, uh, in this area right here, you'll see when I put it back together, um, it's rubbed the coating off of there. I'm a little disappointed with that, only because of the cost of the pistol. Uh, my Smith & Wesson m and Pro, nor my Compact, uh, do that to this level. I mean, you always get the smiley face down here on the end, which this one's starting um, but for some reason the finish on this end didn't take too well or that was their intention but when I put it back together you'll see uh, what I mean it doesn't affect the accuracy or the performance in any way it's just not as pretty as the day I got it uh, the other thing that I noticed which again was absolutely no big deal was the feed ramp you see now it's got a bit of a shine to it and it, it wasn't a shine that I was trying to fix but there was uh, just streaks and strips of black finish on there and like I said it didn't affect the performance of it but it didn't look clean and professional to me so I polished it out as best I could just to try and clean it up but again, that's just a standard 1911, a lower PC 1911, they call it. Let's go ahead and keep cleaning this up. Okay, like I said, this is going to be a very quick cleaning review. It's not completely filthy, but it is a little dirty. And I've not yet taken out the Briley bushing. I'm not sure if it does come out. But with all my luck, if I did take it out, I wouldn't be able to get it back in there. So one of these days, I'll attempt it. But not today, and not on this video. Okay, so that is probably one of the quickest wipe downs I've ever done. And just a couple of very minor baby drops on the slide and the same thing you, you can see the wear points that just need a little attention and I mean a little Assembly, same, same as with any 1911. And on the spring you've got a finished end and an unfinished end. Finished end goes in first. And I'm going to do it this way. I did this once before and that Briley bushing is finicky. 
And I just wonder if I should have put this on before I slid it back in. There's very, very tight tolerance on that Briley bushing. And if it's not exactly centered, well, I'm going to do it the easy way then. You can kind of see that it it comes out of alignment and I have yet to figure out do I put the Briley do I line up the Briley bushing first and I'm gonna go with yes Can you see how it slides around in there? And that would answer my question, does it come out? Because no, it doesn't. But boy, that is a very, very, very tight tolerance. And no, I'm not going to get a hammer and put it in there. It should, there it goes, it should just slide in when the alignment is correct, which it did. That's what I had to do. I had to take the pressure off the slide because the guide rod was sticking up just a hair and getting in the way. Okay, finished end goes in first. And then you feel it snap around the guide rod base. Because the tension is so tight on here, I continue to use the tool until it snaps back on. And this is what I was talking about. The wear marks from the slide. Like I said, it doesn't affect the function at all whatsoever, but just something that aggravates me. There's a list of things that aggravate me, and that's now one of them. But let's see if I can prop that up. As I mentioned, I uh, the first day that I got it, took it out to the range, cleaned it real quick at the clubhouse, cleaned and oiled it after I took it out of the box, as any good soldier does. Uh, and uh, fired, I think it was two magazines through it just to kind of warm it up a little bit and then immediately put up a target. And this was at 25 yards, uh, freestanding. And for, for me, that's pretty good. I, I mean, the important thing here is that these shots are lined up in the center. Um, obviously, the distance from here to here is complete operator error. Uh, breathing, flinching, all the things that I've been trained to do so well. Um, and then this was my second magazine. Um, and that's that's probably a three and a half inch gap there. Um, but it's, it's impressive to me that it is centered. Um, and I, I mean that is strictly operator error. If I had this on a bench with a rest, I'm sure that I could get them all within that circle at 25 yards. Uh, but this was just freehand, first time I fired it uh, out at the range. These were probably rounds uh, 16 through 30 um, of a brand spanking new pistol. So, 
That is a review of the Smith & Wesson Performance Center 1911 Bobtail. This is the commander size. If you have any questions or comments, please send them through. See ya.